Hello, my name is Armin. I'm a lead trainer and motion graphics artist at Notch. And in this video, I will talk to you about creating magic with real-time motion graphics software, Notch. But before we talk about Notch, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So this is me, Armin. I'm a visual artist, a VJ. So that means I spend a lot of time in the dark rooms, making sure that the projections and LED screens looks nice. How did I start with all of this? Well, I've started by playing in a lot of punk and rock bands and it was good times. I was in my early 20s and at some point I met this crazy bunch and they were all into techno music and they said we need a VJ. I wasn't necessarily sure what the VJ is but apparently is a person who is doing a visual set next to the people who are playing music or in front of them in the front of the house. That looked attractive and I thought okay fine let's just give it a go. Uh, why not? I am into motion graphics anyways, I studied graphic designs, this kind of fits my LED and it's actually a performing art. I started to figure out some shit. we built some shit, and we started to perform. Uh, and it was good times, we, we got a couple of projectors, we obviously abused those projectors by watching movies on the neighborhood's walls. And I got a MIDI controller, well basically some basic gear to get started. And yeah, we just made more and more of those shows. At some point, we got a chance to rent a studio space, so we would be working there throughout the week. And during the weekends, we would uh, rearrange that to a bit of a club scene. So while everyone was partying and having a good time, I was still playing around with projections and VJing. Not to say that I didn't join the fun, but I definitely played around with a lot of buttons and faders. It was good times. And then I got to learn that people get paid for this. So what followed was a little bit of touring with various local DJs that are doing shows around the country and a little bit abroad. After a while doing this, I was noticed by a light designer who works in a pro touring and he bluntly said to me that I suck, but I have potential. I, I took it as a compliment, so I just rolled with it and yeah, then we started to work together. So what followed was a little bit of experience in the theater uh, the bands and of course the fun part sleeping on a venue in a various creative spaces as i progressed the spaces got a little bit better so i can vouch that in the pro touring on the highest level there are much much more comfortable arrangements so from there on was a bit of jazz even more bands a little bit of an experience in uh, classical music with the orchestras and then a little bit further down the line, I got hired by Creative Technologies Norway, where I worked as a head of the motion graphics department. It was fantastic times because we had access to a lot of toys. So the stages got bigger, the toys got bigger, and there was more and more shows. And then at some point I was contacted by people who work in a live broadcast and message was quite similar to the one that I've gotten when I was getting into pro touring. You still suck, but you have potential. It was becoming a running theme, but I figured, you know what, if they're teaching, I'm happy to learn. So I started to do TV shows together with a bunch of people who are working for a national broadcaster. We did variety shows, music shows, so on and so forward. So some shows were bigger and some were smaller, but I enjoyed all of them. And to be honest, it makes no sense for me to show you stills of these shows. I might as well show you a little supercut of the things I did for touring and for TV. So I think I found myself in that space, doing visuals, being a VJ, working with the TV and, and touring was absolutely fun. But then I figured that there's one thing that is really killing my creativity and that's rendering, because rendering definitely sucks. And then I figured, are there any real-time tools out there that would allow me 
to bypass this whole rendering thing and waiting endless hours to see the result of the work that you're doing. I love 3D design, but it's so, so far from perfect because usually if you're rendering a 3D sequence, you get to see the first frame, a frame somewhere in the middle, like 45 and a frame 90 if that's your last one. So you render those three and you expect that everything in between will come out right and it will look amazing, which usually is not the case. So there's a lot of time wasted expecting things to look as they should. And you know what? Musicians never ever has this problem. If they play a chord or if they play a progression, they hear it straight away. And that's one big frustrating difference between being creative in a, let's say, musical space and being creative in a motion design or 3D space. So, I was expecting that perhaps there's a tool that allows you to do exactly what a musician would do in 3D or motion graphics. And of course, there are quite a few to choose from and I made my choice. Notch was the one that I felt befits my needs and my wishes. So why out of all of these options out there, I chose to go with Notch? Well, I have no coding background and I don't expect to learn coding because I enjoy design. That's, that's what I want to do day in and day out. And Notch offers a pipeline and a UI that does not require any coding skills. And you can do all the real-time graphics that you want. And of course, you can build interactive experiences with it too. So with that said, I started to do shows using Notch and it was great fun. The more I progressed, the better I've gotten. And the, the best part was that if a art director comes and says like, oh, I want huge... Uh, vent uh, pipes going out from the stage and it has to look really industrial can you deliver this i could say like yeah give me 10 minutes it's done and it's there on the stage because not only i enjoy the fast process of making live visuals people who are hiring djs to do shows they enjoy that too if they ask something they expect to see something quite fast and well real-time tools allows you to do that so things were looking up to me i was traveling the world doing fun shows meeting interesting people and then at some point i learned that notch is looking for a product specialist i figured this is a golden opportunity to give my best shot so I've sent in my CV, they were quite interested, I couldn't believe that they actually wrote back. And then we started to talk a bit more and well, I got hired by Notch to be their product specialist. So it was love from the first sight. So for the past few years, I teach people how to use Notch on location or online and I still play around with shows and experiment on my own time. I have to be honest, I'm still figuring things out because motion graphics is a journey and you never really stop learning. But my travel gear definitely got better and there's more of it. So I really enjoyed that. So by now, I think you know me quite well and we're ready to switch to Notch. So let's get a little bit more hands-on. Let me show you just how easy it is to create visual effects with Notch and control them with something like a MIDI controller. For starters, let's talk about the UI. I'll just introduce the main, most important panels. Here on the left-hand side, we have resources. This is literally where we drop all of our resources, anything from 3D to video files, you name it. Here we have properties. Properties is where we control different parameters of a specific node that we have in our node graph. And this is the node graph. And this is the viewport. This is exactly where the magic happens. So let's make a video processing effect. I'll grab a video source that I brought into my resources and we're gonna apply some effects on it. So as I drag it into the node graph, it comes in as a video loader and we need some kind of a node to output that video. So this is the very video we will be working with. So the node that we're gonna use here for output is going to be image 2D. There we go, I'm gonna connect it to the root and now I'm piping in a video loader to the first input, a video node. And now we are playing back a video file in a notch viewport. So I think now we are ready to get creative with the scene. Here on the right hand side, we have a whole list of different brackets of different nodes available in Notch. And that's literally what you use to create your design. So we just combine them, magic happens. So here we have the whole post effect tab. And as you see, there's quite a few post effects for us to choose from. Uh, I think I'm gonna start with a very specific one. I'm gonna go for vector blur. So I'm just gonna type it in and bring it into the scene. And for this post effect to work, all I need to do is just connect it to the root. Vector blur is active. It's a little bit harsh. There we go. That looks good. So this starts to look a little bit more exciting. Perhaps let's add one more post effect. Something like uh, digital chroma glitch. Why not? There we go. I see it's working. 
it has quite a few color channel modes to choose from and i think this will look better with no split so there is no shortcut in learning all of these post effects what do they do and how do they look however there's a big help if you press on the question mark available on every single node that has properties you will be brought to the manual where you will get the indication of how the node works and how does it look and that applies to all nodes available in notch system so at this point you might be thinking okay this is great this is quite abstract i can make some fun stuff but how do i retain the visibility of the face or of the person that is performing on a stage if i'm using this for uh, live camera effects well i have a good news for you we just recently had a new patch release that includes nvidia's ai background remover hence we can actually make sure that effects are applied only on the background and not on the artist. And this is quite a game changer when it comes to live effects applied on the visual performer. So let's rig that up. So now we'll grab a video null and video null just makes a copy of the video source that I'm already using. So here's my source and this is the null. So this is literally just the iteration of the original video file. And now on this original video file, I will apply NVIDIA's virtual background node. And this virtual background node makes a black and white mask. So that's a very black and white mask we can use as an alpha image for our output. So I'm going to do exactly that by plugging it to the second input right here. And as you see, all of a sudden, the whole background is gone. So just for now, I will disable these post effects. So we have a clean image of the guitar player. All right, since now this guitar player is separated from the background, let's build something abstract just for the background. So in order to do that, I will make a copy of the output node, image 2D. I will connect it to the root. And as you see now, we have a white quad. So that's exactly what the image 2D looks like if it doesn't have a source. It's literally just white quad. So I'm going to use the very same video loader on the image 2D. There we go. Now it's plugged up. So we have two iterations. So this is my foreground image and this is my background image. Now, I actually would like to apply some specific effects to this background image. So what I'm going to do, I will unhook this video loader from my image 2D. I will grab another video null and I will pipe it through from the video source to the null to the image 2D. Now, the reason why I did that is because now I can grab these post effects that are already applied before on the root and apply them directly just on this chain. And would you look at that? Now we have all of the post effects that we created applied only on the background and the foreground with the actual performer is intact. Right, so let's go a little bit more crazy. I'm gonna add one more post effect here in this chain. Let's go for digital block glitch. Perhaps we should change some blend modes in this post effect. Yeah, this looks quite fun. Another thing that is worthy to mention, it's the stacking order. If you change stacking order of the post effects in Notch, it changes the design. So I always try to experiment with that when I build my designs. Cool, I'm quite happy, but I think it's a little bit dark. So perhaps let's add a frame difference here as a last post effect in this chain. <laughs> Yep, there we go. This is crazy enough for me to leave it as it is. So how do we make this a little bit more interactive? For instance, how do we control this scene with the MIDI controller? Let me just nudge this up a little bit so it looks a little bit better. Let me pan out. First of all, you need to go to devices and make sure that you have a MIDI controller connected to Notch. In my case, I see that it's already there. It's Tractor F1 MIDI controller. And that's great. So what I want to do with this controller, I want to grab all of these post effects and enable their blend amount. So basically I want to use a slider to turn them on and off. So how do I go about this? Well, it's just as easy as adding the post effects. We have a special node called MIDI modifier and we can connect this MIDI modifier to a blend amount property of all of these post effects. I'll do that. So I'll set them to off by default and I will do exactly that. I will connect this MIDI modifier to a blend amount of all of these post effects. So now it's connected. And the last step here is to make sure that Notch knows which MIDI slider or button should correspond with this command. So if I start playback and I just slide the slider, this slider right here now is responsible for turning on all of these post effects. So this is rather simple example of what you can do. And it took me 
less than a minute to rig it up. Obviously, you can go a little bit further and you can create some more exciting things. For instance, here's another example. Using the very same technique where you grab a performer, you put it in the front and you put some crazy stuff behind him using the NVIDIA's AR background remover. Here's another example of chest building effects uh, using various stills. Uh, here's one with the cloner system. In this case, this design is cloning various binary messages. Here's one more example using particles and fields. And fields is somewhat of a smoke simulation, so Notch can do that too. And if you're not into video processing at all and you're working with 3D and that's what you want to do, well, you can build 3D scenes and control them with MIDI modifiers as well. For instance, this scene right here is rigged with several commands. So you can just switch through different things. There we go, there's lighting, there's some crazy post effects. And the absolute fun of it all is that it's all real time. So basically you don't need to wait for feedback. You do something, you see that something happening on the screen. And I for one really appreciate that. So this was extremely short demo, but if you're interested in Notch and you want to give it a spin, well, here I have a couple of handy links for you. So the first QR code leads to Notch.1, our homepage where you can download Notch. The second one goes to Notch YouTube page where you can see a lot of tutorials and streams describing various techniques and various uh, workflows. And then the last one is my personal page where I share all of my creations. So basically all of the things that you've seen here, is available via this QR code as a download and as a little tutorial as well. And with that said, I think I'm uh, finishing the presentation. So thank you for watching and see you online.